Good evening, folks. It's Tuesday, September the 7th, 2013. Meeting of the Iredell County Board of Commissioners is now called to order. And we'll have our invocation. Join us, please, in prayer. Merciful Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to come in your presence and make our petitions known. We have several issues before us, and there are quite a variety of them. It will mean a lot of thought and a lot of wisdom in a lot of different areas. A deficiency in which we confess now is you're the source of all wisdom. We humbly ask that you'll impart whatever wisdom we need to make good decisions. Help these decisions be motivated by a desire to serve you and honor you and serve those that you love. And we ask this in your precious name. Amen. Join us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country. Mr. Smith, are there any adjustments of this agenda coming from the staff this evening? Mr. Chairman, there are no adjustments. Okay. Are there any, does any member of the board have any adjustments they'd like to make to this agenda? Hearing none, the floor is open for adoption of this agenda. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve this agenda from Commissioner Griffith. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That brings us to appointments before the board. Representatives from the Davidson Scenic Byway Project will speak in regards to requests for resolution in support of adding a roadway segment in Mecklenburg and Iredale counties to the North Carolina Department of Transportation Scenic Byway Program. Mr. Alexander, welcome, sir. Thank you. My name is Roy Alexander. I'm representing the Davidson Lands Conservancy, a small nonprofit in Davidson. Uh, to ask your endorsement for what I believe is the first scenic byway in either Mecklenburg or Iredale County, and it does straddle that boundary, um, focused mainly on Davidson, uh, that small college town on your south southern border, um, and I'm very much interested in your uh, support for this proposal, uh, which has been endorsed by the staff in the form of your, uh, the former planning director, Mr. Reskowski. This is the scenic byway will tell the story of a scenic and vibrant town that um, is, was sparked by the creation of Davidson College way back in 1837. It's rooted in the the rural Piedmont landscape also in addition to the town. It's a six mile scenic route and a very small piece right up here at the beginning is just north of the Mecklenburg border in Iredell County where that uh, Granville Barker that you saw earlier is located. And then a small portion over here where Gray Road comes out and becomes Greystone Road for about 500 yards, touches on to Shearer Road, and proceeds south into Mecklenburg again. So those two small segments there are the Iredell portion of this particular route as it's proposed. As we say, it celebrates the history, the recreational potential, and the rural beauty of this part of our counties. Uh, starting at that marker that designates a King's Grant that was made back in the fall of 1746 and travels down Main Street of Davidson, which doesn't look like this today. It goes past uh, several uh, historic residences in the, on Main Street there, the first cemetery in Davidson, uh, many historic buildings on the college campus uh, dating back as far as 1836 and then 
right there on Main Street is the old Helper Hotel, which was uh, dated back to 1848. The college campus itself is an arboretum and will be of great interest, I think, to passers-by. Uh, the town is listed on the National Registration Register of Historic Places for its Main Street. Um, it's a very vital community that uh, emphasizes uh, such things as local food, public art, regional music that we find many, we think many visitors to the community will enjoy. And then going out of town, um, proceeding out Concord Road, up Gray Road, into a very scenic rural landscape that uh, exists there where it overlaps both uh, Mecklenburg and Iredale. All this area is settled by many Presbyterians back in the day that, who founded Davidson College. They preserved this scenic beauty through comprehensive planning that we in the Land Conservancy like to celebrate, what a model it is for uh, protection of open space and scenic beauty in natural areas. It does stretch across the two counties, as I mentioned, and um, ends up in an area where we have conserved almost 500 acres of public open space. So we think it will be a very scenic drive. It's six miles. It's certainly not the longest. Some of them are as short, though, as three miles, and uh, others are as long as 143 but this one is more in the typical range as far as length. So um, we would ask your endorsement of this proposal to designate the uh, route shown as the uh, college town ride and a scenic byway for Iredell County. Any questions, Mr. Alexander? Does this designation impose any restrictions or limitations on the county or along the property owners along the byway? To qualify, you must uh, not allow or have any billboards on the property. <clears throat> if you were to allow one and one were, were to in fact be placed on uh, along the route, it would simply lose its designation. It would not even prohibit that landowner putting a uh, billboard up. I understand under your ordinances and such, it's virtually impossible uh, or at least very difficult to get billboards in this part anyway if anybody wanted to do one. But that's the only f restriction that comes with it is there cannot be any scenic, um, any uh, <coughs> billboards of any sort. Okay, any other questions? Not floors open for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I will make the motion that we support the resolution supporting the Davidson Scenic Byway project. Okay. We have a motion from Commissioner Robertson for approval of this resolution. Any discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Alexander, I have a signed copy of this resolution if you'd like to take it with you. Sir. I would appreciate I'll that. I'll meet you at the gate over here. Next, we have a request from Iredale Rescue Squad to draw down capital funds. Mr. Niblock, I believe I saw you here earlier. Mr. Brian Niblock will make this request. There was no requested budget amendment for this item. Would that be required? I think that actually would be required. And if you if you take action tonight and no. You said it's not. I stand corrected. Okay. Mr. Niblock. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Manager, Commissioners. <clears throat> I'm Brian Niblock, Chief of the Iowa County Rescue Squad. I'll try to make this brief because it looks like you have a fairly substantial agenda. Uh, request for funds is for a uh, truck project 
that we have that we're looking into doing. Uh, the capital funds were started <coughs> approximately four years ago for such purchases. Uh, the money is already set aside. It's just you have to make a formal request for those funds. Uh, the truck we have in mind will be a light to medium duty rescue truck, but would also serve in terms of running uh, first responder calls in the district. Uh, this would augment the usage on our east and west substations. Uh, the current truck we're using for that uh, program is the newest in the fleet. It's a uh, 2008. Uh, however, at the rate we're going, we will expend the life of the truck before we pay it off. So in my mind, in business terms, that's not a good process to do. This truck, incidentally, uh, Mr. Johnson's familiar with its uh, course record, has given us some mechanical issues the entire time we've had it. And we see this as a way of uh, also offsetting the usage of that, kind of softening the blow. Um, the truck we're looking to do would be a pickup style truck. Uh, the funds that we would request would handle the purchase of the truck and then the augment and then upfitting of the truck and then supplying it with equipment. And using these funds, uh, we also will not incur any further debt and will not have to secure a loan for the truck. So the request would be for 75000 I believe that's close to what we have in the fund, mm -hmm. minus a few hundred dollars. Ms. Blumenstein may be able to narrow that down a little closer. Uh, but it would take care of the program entirely without having to ask for any further funding for this project. I'll be glad to answer any, any further questions. questions. Mr. Niblock? How, how, much, yeah, I'll, I'll, how much is in the fund? I think it's 75 and a few hundred dollars. If I how many miles are on your current truck? We're in the 60,000 range already. I apologize. I've been out of town and didn't check it when I got back this evening. But if I'm not mistaken, it's like right at $75,480. And what I've done is I've carried that money over from year to year. Um, and that's why a budget amendment's not required. Okay. And, and who, who typically controls, controls or makes those recommendations? Um, I mean, I'm, 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 not, I'm not even talking about your need or whether or not you have a need. This is more just how we allocate money. Because uh, I mean, there are other, if we're getting ready to drain the fund totally, I mean, are the other, have, have we assessed the, that this is the top priority of all the rescue squads and rescue services, that this is how we should spend the last of our capital? Well, it won't drain it for the other ones. This is just for us. There were specific amounts. There was a, a total sum of money was approved for a couple of years for all the, the rescue squads. So each one had its own specific okay, share. So this is, specific this is just for okay. their department that was carried over. Right. Sorry for the confusion. Okay. Yes, and I, I apologize. I should have included a schedule with um, his request. Okay. Yeah, just to clear it up. This is just for our county rescue squad. This is not... Okay. Okay. Didn't have any bearing I didn't on. know if that was your capital or the, you know, the there, county's. Okay. Yeah, several years ago, uh, these folks were having a problem. They would go along pretty good, and then they'd have to make a large capital expenditure, and then that would cripple their current expense for quite some time, trying to service that debt. And we set aside some money in the capital project fund to, to try mm -hmm. to not make that such a, a burden to them, they could draw down that capital fund without it crippling the current expense fund, and then the economy turns south and we quit doing it. Yeah, I would, Mr. Robinson, hit on that. Now, this will pretty much deplete our. Right. So I would say come budget time, I need to give some consideration okay. to that. Um, yeah. But I'll answer any further questions if you okay. have any. All right, any other questions? What, what will be done with the, with the truck that you're having trouble with? We're still going to use it when we're still using it currently. It's just we're trying to forecast forward. If we're at this pound amount of usage now and we still owe X amount, we're going to outrun how much we owe, and the truck will be obsolete. So we'll still be paying for a truck we're not using. 
Uh, plus, it'll help offset some of the usage on the east and west substations, because it's basically being used for that project. So it's, that's where a lot of the miles on top of the calls that's running is coming from. So. Luckily, a lot of the warranty work was done in the initial phases. We're on our third engine, second transmission, if that kind of gives you an idea. Right. I won't get the name brand. I think everybody knows. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? All right. Floor is open for a motion. Motion to, to approve, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to approve from Vice Chairman Norman. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, we just need to get up with Ms. Bloomstein, or is that just an right. electronic transfer? Yep. Okay, thank you. Next, we have a request from Habitat for Humanity for the donation of materials and other in-kind contributions, such as permit fee waivers for an urgent repair program. That will be presented by Dr. Jeff Porter. Dr. Porter, welcome, sir. Thank you very much. and. Uh, I do appreciate you hearing this request. My name is Jeff Porter, and I'm the Executive Director at Habitat for Humanity, and we've come this evening to request a donation of materials and other in-kind contributions for our urgent repair program. And I do have a slide presentation. Um, this, again, uh, is entitled Urgent Repair 2013, and to define what an urgent repair is, this is a repair that poses an immediate danger to the safety and health of a family. Or it is a repair that, if not completed, could cause the homeowner to leave their home and have to go to a nursing home. So to specify the difference between an urgent and a non-urgent repair, the materials we're looking for are for urgent repairs. So these would be repairs pertaining to plumbing, ramps, bathrooms for the handicap, structural failures in floors or in roofs, chimney hazards, and electrical hazards. These materials would not be used for carpeting or windows, cosmetic repairs or gutters, or anything that does not threaten the safety and well-being of anyone or of everyone in that home. For example, here's a current homeowner who is homebound because she cannot get out of her home. She needs a handicap ramp. She literally is a prisoner in her own home. So the plans would be to uh, build a handicap ramp. Here's what we want to do. Habitat has received $50,500 for urgent repairs from the North Carolina <coughs> Housing Finance Agency. Now, in order for us to spend that money, we must match this amount by using donated labor, in-kind gifts, and money. That's why we're coming to you, for materials only. And we must complete 20 projects in this service area, which is just within the boundaries of Iredell County. Uh, we will not venture out beyond Statesville or Iredell County or to any other county. So I've placed in bold what we're looking for are in-kind materials for these projects. So going back to this handicap ramp, materials needed for a walkway, we would specifically come to you for every project and say, here's our material list the wood uh, that we need, the deck boards that we need, uh, the, the size nails. Every project of these 20 projects would come with a specific material request. If you can meet that request, any and all of it, none of it, that's something that could be decided at that time. We just need permission to, to access or, or uh, have contributed those materials. Here's another project. This is a bathroom that a client can no longer use because they cannot step over the tub. 
So what we'll do, we'll go in and we'll remove this tub and place in a handicap accessible uh, bathtub or shower area for this client. M materials again would be the unit, the drain, the shower seat. Again, every material list will be enumerated precisely. So who's eligible? Clients will show a proof of income and that they own and occupy the home. Secondly, clients must be either very low income or low income to qualify. Very low would be 30% of median income. Median income is approximately $57,000 in Iredell County. One person at a 30% would be approximately $12,000. At the 50% would be a little over 20,000. They must qualify uh, and show that they've exhausted every other possible resource to have this repaired. They're in desperate need. They must be 62 years or, uh, some other qualifying questions are, are they 62 years or older? Are they disabled? Or is someone in their household disabled? Maybe not the homeowner, but someone residing there. Is it a single parent household? What is the household size? And are there any children with lead poisoning or, or any sort of significant elevated blood levels, blood lead levels uh, in the home? These are the people we serve. We won't share their names, but every individual has some sort of debilitating condition that inhibits them from fixing their homes or getting out of their homes, or taking a bath or a shower, or living safely under their own roof. Our job is to help those, but we can't do it by ourselves. In the past, we've done this program and been very successful. Here's some pictures of past. This is a before picture of an area that needed a handicap ramp. Here's a ramp that we were able to provide using urgent repair monies and volunteer labor. Here's a bathroom that was impossible to access. You see the large tub, as comfortable as that might be, it was an obstacle, an insurmountable obstacle, until we placed in one of our tubs. This is relatively low cost and provides a great benefit for the homeowner. Here's a copy of an urgent repair once we got into the job, we found that it was much bigger than we had anticipated. But this is what resulted from this sort of coordinated work. Please uh, consider this request to provide urgent repair. Uh, for roofing, it would be shingles, plastic flash, ridge vents, uh, cement, roofing nails. We'll come to you with specific requests and a list. That list will be given a retail value that we show to North Carolina Housing Finance to show that we've matched the funds that they've given us. Okay. Any questions of Dr. Porter? What are the, I don't think Dr. Porter would know this, but what are the permit fees for some of these jobs? Has somebody I don't know the I don't know does any here that can answer that we don't I, I we spoke, don't we don't deal with pardon sorry go ahead no you go ahead well I spoke with Lynn Niblock today and, and I tried to get some of that information myself and it's it's kind of hard to hard to say um, we have a range I would say anywhere from I'd have to guess I'd have to guess our minimum fee is sixty dollars for a permit and depends on what the project is. The one thing uh, that Lynn did say is that he did not feel that the permit fees would be an extremely high number or, you know, if, if they were to be part of this request, that wouldn't be a very high number. I'm not aware of any of these materials that we have that we can donate. I mean, are, do we have these materials? We. We have some materials that basically we use for our maintenance and facilities and, and things of that nature. We, we're not going to have a huge inventory uh, on, you know, 
on hand, no. Is there some type of legal uh, requirement that prohibits us from donating material that's purchased with tax dollars? Uh, I think you'd have to declare a surplus. So is it my understanding that maybe the only thing that could be considered is waiving fees? That would by far be easier, yes. Which is not a huge amount of money. But I got three bundles of shingles you guys can have at my house. I just had my roof replaced. You can come pick up everything I have left. Unopened bundles of shingles. I'll Thank give you. you my address. I'll help out. Thanks. I'm not sure there's a lot that we can do from a commissioner's perspective on on this other than waive fees. I'm, I may be mistaken, but. In, in my conversations with Dr. Porter, I tried to convey that, that the fees would, of the two, if you, if you chose to do either, that that would be easiest. You know, that, that there's a we, precedent for that. One thing I thought about, you could look at your inventory. You know, we approve a surplus inventory list every year, Mr. Smith, and we could look over that thing and see if there's anything in that surplus that you were going to declare surplus that would be of use to these folks. And then when we declare it surplus, we could make some determination what we're going to do with it. And uh, again, though, I, I agree with every, everything that's been said up to this point, that that won't be a tremendous amount of money. I, I will add that I did talk to the, to the health board, and there's a willingness on the health board to assist these folks with some of the uh, environmental health fees. And I spoke with David Henson. And they would be willing to do, certainly do that. You understand right now, I think they're about six weeks behind in the southern end and they're gaining on it. But he said if uh, these folks could work with him where he could get one of his employees to maybe take a shorter lunch or something one day and work on a layout for them or something of that nature, he'd, they'd certainly be willing to do that. Yeah, those aren't small ticket items. Yeah. You that's could, a lot of money. You could be yeah. several hundred dollars. That's a bigger ticket item. I don't know how many septic installations you would have. For repairs. For repairs. repairs. Repairs installations, yeah. You may have some. And, you know, if somebody had a well problem, we could waive that fee, perhaps. All right, so you want me to make that a motion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would support that. And, uh, what I'd like to keep in mind is Mr. Henson, I think he sent me a list, and I apologize, Dr. Porter, I meant to get with you prior to this meeting, but it uh, seems like lately my time's not my own. But he has uh, probably half a dozen questions he'd like to go over with you or some member of your staff and iron out before we make a, arrive at a formal agreement. But there's a willingness on the part of the health board to participate. In try to assist you folks okay. okay all right so then I'll make a motion that um, for the the 2013 urgent repairs program only as it relates to habitat for humanity that we would direct county staff to waive all inspection department fees relative to projects covered uh, under the urgent repair program and that we would ask the, um, the Board of Health to do the same. Okay. That kind of limits the scope and exposure. Okay. All right. Any just further discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, at this point, we'll declare the meeting to be in a public hearing in consideration of a possible economic development incentive for Project Big Mac. And it's going to cost everyone the name of these projects. It's not my idea. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Carney. Always glad to see you. Thank you, sir. I do appreciate it, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. And just for clarification, the names of these projects don't come from me either. They get. Okay matriculated through the process somehow, but... Um, UFOs, <laughs> that's right, that's right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners of Iredell County, I first want to thank you for your time and consideration uh, this evening. I'm here tonight on behalf of Project Big Mac. It is a recreational development project interested in locating in Iredell County. The intent of this project is to locate one of the most widely recognized and highly decorated competitive swimming organizations in the country to our community. This organization provides youth swimming programs all the way to Olympic athlete training. More Olympic swimming athletes train with this organization than anywhere else in the U.S. This project would entail $10 million in new tax investment to Iredell County and bring 25 full-time jobs and 50 part-time jobs to the area. The full-time jobs associated with this project bring wages varying between $30,000 and $70,000 per year. If this project chooses to locate, the developer, RL West, would construct a 51,000 square foot recreational aquatic and event center and 2,200 seat stadium and enter a long-term a long lease agreement with this aquatic center. Incentives provided to RL West would be used to lower the cost of leasing to that aquatic center. <clears throat> In accordance to the Iredell County Industrial Development Incentive Program, we are requesting incentive be granted to RL West in association with developing this aquatic center for 80% of increased tax value paid back for a period of five years. This amount would equal $38,800 per year for five years, totaling $194,000. I want to thank you for the consideration of this matter. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about it. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Carney? <clears throat> This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak in regard to this? If you would come forward and state your name for the record. Okay. If not, we'll declare this public hearing closed and we'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve a $194,000 incentive over a five-year period based on the company's investment of $10 million in contingent upon a contract being executed within 180 days. Okay. Any discussion on Mr. Robertson's motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We'll declare this meeting once again to be in a public hearing, this time in consideration of a possible economic development incentive for Project Metal. Mr. Carney. Again, thank you for the opportunity to present um, this project, Project Metal. I'm here to request consideration for Project Metal should they choose to expand their operations in Iredell County. Uh, project Metal is actually structured medical. Um, they are headquartered in Naples, Florida, first located in Iredell County in 2006, and they are a state-of-the-art advanced manufacturing company that provides titanium medical implant products for the medical device industry. They currently own and occupy 24,000 square feet in the Deerfield Business Park, and their facility houses over 25 CNC machines, and they employ 41 full-time employees. This project would bring a maximum investment of $6 million in new machinery and equipment over the next three years and allow them to create 25 additional full-time jobs these jobs would pay an average salary of $37,000 per year plus benefits, and this project would be completed in December of 2016. In accordance to the Iredell County Industrial Incentive Policy, we request consideration on incentive for, instruct for structured medical should they decide to expand their operations. Their investment would be a maximum of $6 million and a minimum of $3 million with a maximum incentive payout of $23,280 per year for five years totaling $116,400 and a minimum payout of $11,640 per year for five years, totaling $58,200. Once again, I'm happy to answer any questions we might have in regards to Project Metal. Okay. Any questions of Mr. Carney in regard to this? 
Again, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in regard to this matter? If you would, come forward, please. <clears throat> if not, we'll declare this public hearing closed and the floor is open for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the incentive ranging between $58,200 and $116,400 over a five-year period based on the company's investment ranging between $3 million and $6 million and contingent upon a contract being executed within 180 <coughs> days. Okay. Motion to approve comes from Commissioner Robertson. Any discussion on his motion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Will at this time declare the meeting to be in a public hearing in consideration of a possible economic development incentive for Project Point. Mr. Carney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, at this time, I would like to request consideration for incentive assistance for Project Point. Project Point is a new relocation project of Sharp Gallagher Racing. Sharp, uh, Sharp Gallagher Racing operates teams in both NASCAR truck and ARCA series is, and is interested in locating in the Mooresville South Idaho community. The project is interested in purchasing the 126 Exmoor facility located in the Deerfield Business Park. The project would include purchasing the 31,000 square foot facility and expanding that facility to 46,000 square feet. The company would bring 25 full-time jobs and hire an additional 10 to 15 new full-time positions paying average wages of $57,600 per year. The company plans to invest a total of between five and six million dollars in purchasing the facility, as well as new machinery and equipment investment. These expenditures are estimated to create 3.1 million in new tax investment to Iredell County. In accordance to the Iredell County Industrial Incentive Policy, we are requesting that incentive be provided to Sharp Gallagher Racing for 80% of increased tax value and pay back over five years should they choose to move forward with this project. Based on a $3.1 million new tax investment, that incentive equates to $12,028 per year for five years totaling a maximum incentive of $60,140. And again, I'd be happy to answer any questions in association with Project Point, another project in which I did not name. <clears throat> any questions, Mr. Carney? Is there anyone who, here who wishes to speak in regard to Project Point? If you would, please come forward. If not, we'll declare this public hearing closed and the floor is open for a motion. Before I make the motion, should I declare that I didn't name it either? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion to approve uh, $60,140 incentive over a five-year period based on the company's investment of $3.1 million and contingent upon a contract being executed within 180 days. <coughs> okay. Motion for approval comes from Commissioner Robertson. Any discussion on his motion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimous. We'll declare this meeting to be in a public hearing in consideration of a possible economic development incentive for project repeat. Mr. Carney? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This one I did actually <coughs> name. This is probably the only one in the group that, that was the name I gave to it. But you'll see how simple-minded I am. Would you um, it's a ridiculous name. I got it. No. <laughs> Would you repeat that, please? <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, on behalf of the MSIEDC, I'd like to request consideration for NGK Ceramics plans for their 14th expansion to their Mooresville facility. As a manufacturer of ceramic catalytic converters and supplier to the automotive industry, NGK Ceramics has been located in Iredell County since 1988. Their 530,000 square foot facility is located in the South Iredell Industrial Park and currently they employ 521 full-time workers with wages paying above county average. NGK is considering a 30,000 square foot expansion to their raw material processing facility to export product materials to other worldwide plants. This project would create 28 new full-time positions and generate 21.5 million in new tax investment. The project will be completed by December of 2014. In accordance to the Iredell County Industrial Development Incentive Program, we're requesting that incentive be granted to NGK Ceramics for 80% of increased tax value paid back for a period of five years. This amount would equal $83,420 per year
for five years, totaling $417,100. I want to thank you for your consideration of this matter, and I would also be willing to take any questions in regards to project repeat. Any questions, Mr. Carney? They've been a good member of our business community for a number of years. How many times have they actually expanded down there? Several. They've, yeah, we, we do have a couple of project expansions outside of that 14 that there was no competitive nature for the projects, and so therefore they didn't receive any type of incentives. But this one, we are competing with both China, Japan, and Canada. It's an impressive operation. If you yes, ever sir. get a chance, you need to go see it. Okay, any questions? <coughs> Is there anyone who wishes to speak in regard to project repeat? not, we'll declare this public hearing closed and the floor is open for a motion. Okay. Mr. Chairman, we'll do a clean sweep. Uh, make the motion to approve $417,100 incentive over a five-year period based on the company's investment of $21.5 million and contingent upon a contract being executed within 180 days. Okay. Mr. Robertson makes a motion for approval. Any discussion on his motion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Again, we'll declare this meeting to be in a public hearing in consideration of a possible economic development incentive for project start. <coughs> Mr. Carney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, last but certainly not least, I'm here to present uh, to you on behalf of BESCO, formerly known as Best Suites. Um, a manufacturer of candy confectionery items and OTC pharmaceutical products, uh, Mooresville and Iredell County has been the home and headquarters of BESCO since 1988. Currently, they employ 370 full-time workers with an average salary 20% higher than the county wage average. BESCO is considering an expansion to existing facilities. If successful, this project would include the purchase and expansion of a new gummy line for gro growth in the over-the-counter pharmaceutical manufacturing sector. The project would entail $12.85 million in new tax investment in machinery and equipment, as well as a 30,000-square-foot expansion to existing facilities. This project would also create 55 new full-time positions, paying wages above $40,000 annually. This project would be completed by December of 2014. In accordance to the Iredell County Industrial Development Incentive Program, we request that incentive be granted for 80 percent of increased tax value paid back for a period of five years based on a maximum investment of $12.85 million or a minimum investment of $3.1 million and adjusted proportionately to the actual tax value. The incentive grant equals a maximum payout of $249,290 or a minimum incentive of $60,140 over a five-year period of time. Once again, with Project Starch, I will be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Carney? If not, is there anyone here who wishes to speak in regard to Project Starch? If you would, come forward, please. If not, we declare this public hearing closed and the floor is open for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion to approve the incentive ranging from between $60,140 to $249,290 over a five-year period based on the company's investment of $3 million dollars up to ten million dollars in contingent upon a contract being executed within 180 days okay mr robertson offers a motion to approve this request any discussion on his motion if not all in favor say aye aye, aye. all opposed motion carries unanimously thank you Mr. so much Ross. for your consideration i appreciate it yes sir Good job, Robert. Yes, sir. It's about 150 new jobs to the county. Yep. Great. Okay, we'll declare this meeting to be in public hearing and consideration of citizen input regarding the North Carolina Department of Transportation Rural Operating Assistant Program Grant. Mr. Ben Stockler will make this presentation. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here tonight. Yes, um, this is a public hearing for our rope grant as stated in a previous meeting. This is the Rural Operating Assistance Program. It's a formula grant from NCDOT. Um, the money has already been set aside by the state legislature. It will apply to this fiscal year. 
we're seeking public input and request a motion that will allow us to um, apply for and accept these funds if the application is submitted. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Steichleather? This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here who wishes to address this matter? If you would, please come forward. not we'll declare this public hearing closed and the floor is open for a motion motion to approve we have a motion to approve from commissioner griffith any discussion not all in favor say aye aye, aye. all opposed motion carries unanimously thank you thank you sir At this point, we'll declare this meeting to be in a public hearing in consideration of a request from Joyce Johnson with Pfeiffer One Johnson Limited Partnership, RLLLP, to release zoning and subdivision jurisdiction to the town of Mooresville. Mr. Todd. Good evening, board. As stated tonight, we have a uh, request for 38.09 acres to be released to the uh, town of Mooresville zoning and subdivision jurisdiction. Uh, they proposed a, a residential development with single-family patio homes and duplex homes, 114 to be exact. Under the uh, county zoning minimum lot size, you'd be looking at about 82 lots for that property. Uh, so with the proposed, you're looking at about 770 trips per day. And uh, Rocky River capacity currently has about 5,000 trips a day, <coughs> and the capacity is at 12,000 trips. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions, Mr. Todd? If not, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in regard to this matter? If you would come forward and state your name, please. My name is uh, Dan Brewer with WSP. I represent the uh, surveyor and engineer for the property, and I'm just here to answer any technical questions you may have. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any questions, this gentleman? Okay. Is there anyone else here who wishes to speak? I do. Okay, come forward and state your name for the record, please. I never spoke at a place like this, so this is new for me. I'm Patricia Magnuson, and I live beside Pfeiffer Johnson in that big square that's labeled RA on the corner. Mm -hmm. And I come from Ohio. And where I grew up was farmland, and it became developed. The city grew out there. And I've seen bad development before. And I don't want to live through bad development again. So here's my issues. First of all, how do you allow for a big green space for the people that are going to be there? Or how are you going to protect our land around that property? How are we going to keep the people come from coming into our woods and our meadows? Also, you don't see it, but that's a hill. Pfeiffer Johnson's at the top of the hill. Our house is at the top of the hill. Our neighbors are at the top of the hill, and then we have runoff all the way down. So when you put in streets and asphalt, I'm going to ask that you make sure your runoff does not come down that hill, because now when we get big rain, the um, water runs off the road, and we get eight-inch carry out and um, troughs in the road now. So if you increase the runoff there, we're going to have even more problems. And I don't want more erosion down my property, okay? Um, so how are you going to keep them out? Are you going to build fences on our side? Um, and just a sideline, I'm not going to be able to see the cows anymore, but anyway. Um, when I was little and they did development in my Ohio town, the first thing that went bad was the water table. Those of us who are not part of Mooresville, we're still on septic and we're still on well. And when I was little, they put in hotels and subdivisions and they ruined our water table. And our water table started coming out brown and it smelled and we couldn't bathe in it and we started cart carting in water to our houses. So I don't know what kind of well and plumbing you're going to put in, but please don't ruin our water table because a lot of those folks down there can't afford to go into the public sewer and the public water, okay? That's a hookup, that's a costly thing, okay? Increased traffic. I live on that curve and my driveway comes out on that curve. Um, I'm waiting to be broadsided now. 
the traffic there at 7 a.m. and at 5 p.m. is going 60 miles per hour, 55. They're coming up there and they screech to a halt when I'm pulling out. I'm waiting for me either to be killed or my children to be killed. Okay, it's not safe. And they're not going 45. Um, at the peak periods of the day, I'm on the corner, the mailbox is across the road. I can't cross the road and get the mail. I've waited there 15 minutes to cross the road and get the mail. They said I could move the mailbox, but I can't move that mailbox safely because I have no space for the postman to pull over. So I either have to wait to cross the road or I'm going to have to move my mailbox down toward Pipers and walk down there in the ice and the snow. Okay. Um, the only other major concern is the increased traffic. You say there's not going to be any. I say there will be. You're adding 100 homes. There's going to be more traffic. And I know I can't stop progress, but if you're going to plan to expand, then you need to plan it well. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in regard to this request? I'd, I'd be glad to answer Ms. Magnuson's questions. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, I can show her some of the uh, sketch plans we've done. We have a very uh, thick buffer. Uh, most of the land is actually going to be left undisturbed. Uh, it's, this, this project is targeted towards active adult communities, which, which is a smaller home, ranch-style homes. Um, our uh, traffic study has been done. Actually, active adult communities have a much less traffic impact than a normal residential subdivision. Uh, this project meets the Mooresville uh, land use plan. Uh, we'd be on Mooresville Utilities, the reason for the annexation. Uh, Mooresville has some very stringent stormwater rules. Uh, all stormwater would be collected in, in stormwater detention systems where no more water that's coming on it now will be released later. When you said Mooresville Utilities, you're referring to the there will not be wells, there's going to uh, be Mooresville City Water. Mooresville right? Water and Sewer. Uh, the sewer trunk line actually runs down along the side of this property, gra gravity sewer to the treatment plant. Uh, well, looking at this map, it appears that the undeveloped parts of this track will be on the, basically on the north and west side. On, on the north side of the property is a, is a creek. Yeah. And there'll be uh, a couple hundred foot buffer along the north side. Well, I understand there's a pretty significant buffer there, but on the east side of the property where this lady's property is there are by my count 15 lots that are going to be directly on the eastern uh, boundary of that track that's correct and is there any anything that will be done to prevent water runoff in that direction that seems to be a concern mm. the the project will be graded where all the runoff is directed to the detention along the north side Okay, so so the so the the street is is going to be guttered in such a way that 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 far right hand side street is basically going to channel all the all the water down that way. Yes, sir. The site will be graded where the stormwater will all drain to the public street, and then that will be routed to the stormwater system. Okay. Yeah. When you say adult community or older adult community are you targeting it to retirees or what yes sir the active adult communities in the 55 and older range and this is the community that that is attracted to this type of development uh, this type of development is, is maintenance free all the lawn care is taken care of irrigation it's not not restricted to any age no this will not be restricted yeah you think that would be the, the uh, type of people would be interested in buying there <coughs> yes and this is also a commercial node on the Mooresville land use plan, and the residential section would be off of that. The neighborhood business piece will be reserved for later. Okay. And with it being across the street from the shopping center, it's not a rural rural development, and that meets the land use plan as being a, a residential section, but not not a rural residential section. Okay. Any other questions? Anyone else who wishes to speak? 
If not, we'll declare this public hearing closed and the floor is open for a motion. I'd just like to make a comment or two. The, the density of this subdivision is approximately three houses per acre. Lots are smaller than what three houses per acre would be if, if all the property were developed, some of it's not being developed. Uh, I would prefer that density be kept to two dwelling units per acre. We, we do have, growth does cause a lot of impacts and residential growth causes adverse impacts. That being said, this uh, development isn't, won't have nearly as much adverse impact as one on Highway 150 that uh, I voted against a few weeks ago. It's a, a much smaller, much less dense, uh, dense development than that. But I've given a lot of thought to the whole issue of extraterritorial jurisdiction and a lot of issues have arisen over it and I've just about reached the conclusion I would like to see the General Assembly do away with ETJs if inside of a municipality, the city or town government has zoning power. If you're outside of it, the county has zoning power and just, <laughs> just do away with this ETJ uh, designation altogether. That's, that's something that's beyond our control. Okay. Any other comments or a motion? I'll make them all, I guess. Okay. I'll, uh, Mr. Chairman, I grant that we that we release zoning and subdivision jurisdiction to the town of Mooresville for Joyce Johnson with Pfeiffer Johnson uh, our Limited <coughs> Partnership, RLL. All right. Mr. Robertson makes a motion for approval. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That brings us to administrative matters. Mr. <laughs> Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first item, A, is a request from the NCDOT via our planning department, Matthew Todd, uh, to abandon the maintenance of State Road 2161. Uh, State Road 2161 is uh, known as Ferguson Road. You can see it there on the map, highlighted in blue. Uh, connects Cool Springs with White Oak Branch. The um, state is formally requesting, requesting abandonment of the maintenance for this portion, which was actually started by the uh, adjacent property owners uh, on both sides of it. There is no right-of-way for this road. It's uh, just been an assumed right-of-way, ditch to ditch, basically. So the uh, dropping the maintenance on this will allow those property owners to basically claim what they've owned uh, to the center line of the existing road. Out and of curiosity, was the state maintaining it even though they didn't have a right-of-way? As a state road, it? as a state road, yeah, they were maintaining it. It is a gravel road, but they were maintaining it. It was just a cut through for everybody, wasn't it? Yeah, the traffic counts from DOT is about 30 vehicles per day. No homes are accessed off of it. Well, I understand there's uh, farmland on either side, and they'd just like to continue just farming in there. Correct. I think they recently purchased these tracks and just looking at shutting off access. Okay. Huh? Any other questions, Mr. Todd? Well, this is more of a comment, but th this is different than any of these other abandonment of maintenance requests we've had. The ones I've seen in the past were either where a, maybe a road was paved and a curve was straightened out and the old part was abandoned or an intersection was, was straightened out or there was a dead end section of a road that was surrounded by a property that, you know, people didn't want. I've never seen one where it was an actual through road where you abandoned the whole road, even if it's a, in a small through road. Or where there was no deeded right of way. I don't uh, know. Well, I, don't know I think I that from what I heard, and this is anecdotal, there are quite a few other roads that where there's no deeded right of way either. 
That'd be correct. But, uh, sir, that's correct. Yeah, okay. So that, that's not a unique situation. I can see where people that live further up this White Oak Branch Road and are going down River Hill Road or wherever may want to use it for a right of way. And I, I, I kind of respect the desires of the adjacent property owners. One of the property owners I spoke to said that it's uh, used quite a bit as a little quick speedway, and they're concerned about how they run the stop sign on both ends and just put back there. Yeah. Okay. Floor's open for a motion. Mr. Chair, I make the motion that we approve the request from the NCDOT <coughs> to abandon the maintenance on State Road 2161 Ferguson Road. Okay. Mo um, motion's made to grant this request by Commissioner Griffith. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Todd. Item B is a request from Iredell Statesville Schools for approval of a water line easement at Woodland Heights Elementary. And Dr. Kenny Miller will make that request. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. Uh, we, we had a request from Crescent Land Resources for a water easement across our, I guess it would be the southern border of our property to the property that's being developed on Forest Lake Boulevard. Our board has approved that easement. It does not affect any of our property as far as our ball fields or any of our equipment. Uh, is along the edge of the property line and there is also a uh, what they're proposing to us is an exchange of one acre of property adjoining our property and i think mr pope has a lot of the details on this particular easement but our board has approved it okay uh, mr chairman uh, point out that uh, as of this moment this property is encumbered by a mortgage However, uh, in trying to explore what our options were, one option was to try to get it released from that mortgage. That was a pretty cumbersome, time-consuming, and expensive process. <coughs> and we learned and realized that the refinance transaction we're doing is going to close tomorrow morning, and this property will be free from that mortgage as of that time. So we would be requesting that you approve this transaction subject to that uh, refinance closing tomorrow and the mortgage being released. Okay. Any questions of Dr. Miller or Mr. Pope? Not. Floor's open for a motion. Mr. Chairman, motion to approve with the stipulations included. Okay. Motion to approve comes from Vice Chairman Norman. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, sir. I'm going to turn the next two items, C and D, over to David Salibi. Uh, these are both requests for new rescue districts. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman Johnson, Board yes, Commissioners. Uh, tonight we have uh, your next two agenda items. We have uh, two volunteer fire departments, Lake Norman and Shepherds, both in the Southern District, uh, was included in your board packet, a map. Uh, both of these uh, fire departments are currently a medium level of rescue. Uh, both of these fire departments are requesting rescue districts to be formed, which uh, is, re is required by the Board of Commissioners to form these rescue districts. These districts will coincide with the current fire district lines for each one of those uh, departments. Uh, each one of these departments have uh, completed or fulfilled the uh, requirements uh, by the county to form a rescue districts. Uh, they were also in your board packet, uh, mutual aid agreements with a, uh, a higher level of rescue. And uh, 
Lake Norman has a mutual aid agreement, which is, was in your packet with the town of Mortal, which is heavy rescue and specialized. Lake Norman is currently medium. Uh, Shepherd's Fire Department is, is also currently medium. They have a mutual aid agreement with Mortal, who is, as I said, heavy, and they also heavy rescue, and they also have a mutual aid agreement with the uh, Troutman Fire and Rescue, which is also heavy rescue. Each one have, uh, ha they have submitted uh, to you a ECOM or a communications protocol on how to be dispatched. Uh, this, ba this dispatch has not been turned over to uh, our communications group yet. Uh, when it does, as, as it's rolled in, it will be subject to, to some clarification by ECOM. Uh, and they will uh, have a little bit of work to do with the districts to make sure that the correct procedures are in place after reviewing that. In your board packet, there was verifications, uh, which was also required, uh, verifications of their certification. Uh, verifications of mutual aid certifications. And uh, there was a special, a, a letter of any uh, special funding that would be requested by them, also included in your, in your packet. We have representatives from both, uh, from Lake Norman, have uh, uh, their chief and uh, Andy Weatherman and Kevin Clark, assistant chief from Shepherds. We have uh, Chief Kelly Robinson, assistant chief Jamie Barringer, and they are here to answer any questions. It, is there any questions from you at this time? Okay. Any questions of Mr. Sleeby or these gentlemen from Lake Norman? I have a question. There have been uh, meetings about this going on, and is it your understanding that all the groups represented at these meetings are aware of the direction that the county is heading as far as rescue uh, yes and rescue uh, districts yes uh, there have been uh, a there's been a emergency services team meeting for the southern end of the county and it and that team was comprised of uh, the four volunteer fire departments Morville fire department Morville rescue and Iowa county ems and they've all been part of these meetings uh, they're ongoing uh, there's just a little bit left to do as far as uh, any possible funding in the future and uh, maybe some uh, EMS services in that area. Uh, but other than that, they pretty well work through the process. But uh, we, the county has facilitated that team, but the team uh, was mostly led by them and uh, decisions were made by a group of all representatives. And it's your understanding that all the members representative represented uh, was aware th of this direction that we were all moving? Yes. You understand? Yes. As I understand it, yes. All the members of the team, that's correct, <coughs> that represented each, each right. department. Any other questions? Didn't have so much of a, a, a question as maybe a a statement and a, and, a, and a wish. You know, a lot of times what makes government in a, inefficient is, as opposed to private industry, is private industry is primarily focused on, on, on maximizing efficiency and doing stuff with the lowest cost, um, highest degree of service, that type of stuff. And um, in government, we do have to be concerned about fairness, and sometimes whenever we we, uh, we err on the consideration of fairness. Sometimes we lose some of our efficiency. And we clearly are going through a transition in the southern end of the county where the way we used to do things based upon the previous demographics is changing. And any time anytime in nature there's change, there's always, it seems to be there's typically usually some pain and also there are some inefficiencies um, until everything kind of in, until everything balances out, so I, I don't have any, I don't have any preconceptions that this is going to be without pain um, or without future adjustment. I would ask, though, is um, is 
uh, both of these requests asked for the money to follow the service, and we understand that. Um, but when the town of Mooresville made their request initially, they they worked with us. They they didn't hold it tied to the money, at, at least initially, if I recall correctly. So in, until some of our roles and responsibilities are, are settled out, uh, I'm going to um, – I don't think we need to modify a, a motion or whatever other than grant – if we want to grant the request that they have a new district, but give us some flexibility as, as this transition begins to occur to deal with some of the obligations that we've got with our rescue services. And, um, and, and maybe that can help us, you know, as we define what everybody's roles will be in the future. So I'm just asking for some flexibility, you know, when I say I'm asking, I'm, I'm saying we're going to need some flexibility as we move forward. And I'm not talking about between now and next July. I'm talking about, you know, 2000, the budget year 2000, um, 2014 and 2015, we're going to going to need some flexibility. This, this is definitely a, the, the trend in the southern end. It's, uh, like I said, it's, it, I'm not against it happening. I mean, I think in the end we're going to have more, more trained, certified uh, volunteer firemen and rescue personnel available to serve the citizens via the, the fire service. And, uh, and, and, you know, sometimes the public has asked us about some of the redundancies of our system. They go, you know, we certainly have a lot of people responding. Now, of course, the people who are in the car that's wrecked, they never ask that question. They're happy. In fact, they, they'd be happy if we sent two more, you know. But um, so, so th this is just, I think this is, this is just a trend, and I don't think that we've seen the end of it. Um, so. With those concerns and with that consideration, um, you know, I, I could support the motion. Thank you, sir. Mr. Salibi, do you see that this is an inevitable direction that the southern end of the county is moving towards? I mean, it's because of the just the shift in population and, and the way that things have grown. Do you see this as just the natural result of changes in the area that we have to look at doing this a little different yes the southern end of the county has has grown quite a bit and uh, and it's nothing like the middle or the northern end it's it it has a personality uh, of its own and and this appears to be the way that it's moving uh, with or without with or without some formal team of looking at looking at it. It appears to be moving that direction. And it was done with Mooresville in, in uh, the spring of 2011. It was granted, and it just seems to nat the natural progression only for the southern end at this time. Do you think it will provide better service to the citizens? Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, we, we showed the map of, of where rescue squads were located at the ball, at the winter retreat. And then we overlaid that with the map of fire departments and how many more there were. Uh, rescue squads do a great job throughout the entire county, uh, but it but it appears with the, with the number of fire departments they can respond quicker, uh, at least be there first. Uh, and there's still need for rescue squads in in Iredell County uh, to handle the the larger events. Yes. You know, Mr. Levy, as I sit here and, and think about these things, and when you sit in one of these chairs for a number of years, you, you begin to develop personal relationship with people, and you, you, you gain a great deal of admiration for people who have dedicated their lives to this kind of service with no monetary reward whatsoever. They, they just did it because they're good people. And... You gain such an admiration from them, it, it makes decisions like these even more difficult. But there comes a time when you're, you're asked to be a good steward, and you got to set personal feelings aside, and that's difficult to do. Uh, the demographics have driven this process, 
in the north end of the county, you may respond to a call and the, the problem a lot of time is distance. In the south end of the county, you can have a lot shorter distance, but it'll take you longer to get there. You can't go east, west, in any direction in the south end of the county from Morrisville without driving through several neighborhoods and two or three different business districts at least. So this is what has driven this process, and it's a little bit it's a little bit painful for all of us to do, but sooner or later, you know, if you're going to be a good steward of the assets you have and you're going to provide the best service to the people that you serve and you're going to do it at least cost, you've got to do some things that uh, – a lot of times make you uncomfortable with some of the relationships you've established, but it's incumbent upon you to do that. And that's kind of where we are. And, uh, I appreciate the job you've done. I know we've tasked you with some, some difficult things to do in the last few months, and I appreciate the effort you put forth. I, I do want to say this, that anything we do is not meant to be in a spirit where we're just going to cast aside the folks at the Morsel Rescue Squad. These are good people who served their community for years. And I'm going to ask the gentlemen and ladies here who represent these fire departments tonight take a message back to their folks that if anyone from the Morsel Rescue Squad desires to continue in emergency services in this county and approach you with a willingness to serve in your fire department in the area of rescue, I would ask you to respect that request and grant it to them. Unless you can think of any matter of moral turpitude or whatever that's uh, definable and provable, I would ask you to take them in out of respect for the service they've done to their communities. And uh, I, I think they will. I would ask them to. And, and I would, uh, I would ask the folks in the rescue squad to avail themselves of that opportunity. These, these folks in private had expressed the willingness to work with them and, and do that, and make a place for them, make them feel welcome, and continue to provide them with the, in a personal life, what's been the calling of their lives, and, then, and let them continue to see the blessing of serving others. And with that, I'd offer a motion that we'll go ahead and grant this request. Let me just make one other comment, just step back a, a bit. You know, um, Chairman Johnson always quotes one of our founding fathers or somebody that wrote the Constitution. I, I'm going to quote a character from a movie. Uh, in, in, in the movie The Replacements, Gene, Gene Hackman plays a coach, and, um, and one of the things that he, that he says to the players is when the game is on the line, a winner always wants the ball. And, and really – kind of what, what what's kind of painful here is um, you know we have multiple entities down in the southern end of the county that when the game is on the line which is somebody's hurt or something bad has happened we've got multiple organizations that want the ball and they're volunteer organizations to boot and I think that that says that speaks volumes as to the character and the character um, of these people and um, just our, our, our hats off to them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, everybody doesn't get the ball. So. Okay. okay, any discussion on the motion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. For both of them. All right. Both? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Item E is a request for, for the appointment of two citizens to the Firefighters Relief Fund Board of Trustees. And Susan Blumenstein will make that presentation. Thank you. Each year I bring you a list of trustees of um, four the Firefighters Relief Fund that have been recommended by each of the volunteer fire departments in the area. Um, there were no changes from last year, and I would request that you approve the trustees as submitted. Okay. Any questions? Floor is open for a motion. Move to approve. Motion to approve from Commissioner Boone. All in favor say aye. 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 
All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item F is a request for approval of an EMS physical ability policy with an effective date of October 1st, 2014. And David Clower and Sandra Gregory are both here to make that presentation. Welcome, Mr. Clower. Good evening. How are y'all this afternoon? Fine. This evening. Um, I think, as y'all know, we've been working on a physical agility policy for a few years now. We've run into multiple hurdles with the ADA and our um, legal side of it to make sure we can develop a policy that's fair and uniform and defendable. Uh, I think this policy outlines that. And it's just need to be clear on this, this policy does not say that if we implement this that we will not have any more injuries in EMS because EMS is a difficult job and the potential for injury is always there on every call. But acceptance of this policy may help reduce those injuries and also reduce the lost work time associated with it during the recovery process. And I'll be happy to entertain any questions you may have. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Clore? Um, I have two. Yes, sir. Um, and, and one is probably a little bit geared towards the Sandra in here. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Right here somewhere. Um, and Mr. Pope, and that is. Uh, a, um, a prospective employee will have to take the test prior to being hired, correct? Yes. Um, if, you know, if Joe, Joe Blow from the street comes and he goes, okay, I, wanna, I want this position, fills out the application, y'all say, we're going to give you the test. Joe Blow's taking the test, you know, and, and blows a valve in his heart. Are we liable? No, not a so. county employee. He's just an applicant. I don't think so. Okay. All right. And the next one is, will ES, EMS management who, who does, who supervises and, and does this, will they also have to pass the test? That's one of the hurdles we were trying to get over. The field supervisors, yes, we can mandate anybody that has direct pre-hospital care. Now, we are going to encourage all administrative staff, including myself, to also partake in this, but we cannot mandate them by our legal advice because it's not a direct job requirement. Our current employees have to pass the test? Yes. What they, happens if they don't? Well, that, we're, that's why we're postponing the date, to actually effective date, till 10-1 of 2014 to give them time to prepare and see where they're at. Uh, and that was one of the things we had to go across too was the ability to meet the standard, give them time to be able to come up and meet the standard. We're going to offer several of these tests throughout this year to see where people can see where they're at and what they need to work on. Um, if they fail to meet the test, they will be put with our wellness coordinator and then she'll develop a plan with them to work on physical agility in some different time. Then they'll be given a chance to retest at that point. Can I add to that? And if they continue to not pass that test, it will be handled as standard work performance. So it would go through the disciplinary, progressive, progressive discipline process if they could not pass the test. Uh, do you anticipate that all or most of the employees will be able to pass this test, or do you anticipate there would be some significant number that would not? I, to that, I don't know. The average was done based on the a group of employees that are already working here now. That's where the time frame came from. Uh, I would say there will be some that will probably fail if they do not put an effort into it. That's why we're doing a lot of preemptive telling them here it is. We're going to get set up the courses and actually put them through it and work with them to get those standards established. How do these compare with national standards? There is no national standard. Really? Hmm. The only emergency services field there is no standard in. Hmm. Any state standards? We're one of the few that are actually actually pursuing anything in that area. Well, good for you. Mm -hmm. That's good. I, I know Iredell County is not in the Army. It been in, the Ar in the Army, it was lead by example. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was, uh, you know, a 45 or however, I'm trying to think how old I was at the time, you know, 44, 45 year old colonel. Uh, when my troops ran, I ran. When, uh, when they, when they, uh, packed all their gear on and, and, and strapped on their black Cadillacs and, and, uh, and, and walked 12 miles, I did it with them. And uh, so 
when it's, uh, when it's time to go through the, the field test, can't say that I'll pass, but if I need to go out there and, and show them that, that we're not taking this lightly, I'll, I'll, I'll volunteer, okay? You're all more I'll, than welcome to come. I'll, I'll do it too, okay? okay? Just to show that's how important it is, and uh, I think it's that important for the leaders as well. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, I make a motion. We re we does make Ken Robertson as the <laughs> <laughs> as the uh, representative for the board of commissioners. Well, I was going to say the pay's not real good, and the privileges are few. Mm -hmm. I'm exercising the privilege. I will not be there. <laughs> <laughs> you can come watch. Okay. I go to the county commissioner meetings at the state. You can do the agility okay. test. All right. All right. I'll do it with them. Any further discussion? Questions? Floor's open for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make the uh, motion that we approve this policy as written. Okay, motion for approval comes from Commissioner Robertson. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Maybe I should, Mr. Pope, if a commissioner is dot blows out a valve in this competition, is he covered by? Uh, no, I don't think workers' comp cover that. Just don't do it in your running shorts, please. <laughs> Item G's request from Nancy Keith. Okay, good evening. Um, we in Cooperative Extension would just come to request permission from you to apply for a $10,000 grant through the Easton Foundation for the Ardell County 4-H shooting sports team, and that would be in archery. Okay. Any questions? Doors open for a motion. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to approve from Vice Chairman Norman. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you we'll ma'am. call this project Wolfpack. <laughs> <laughs> Item H. Oh, she names it afterwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Item H is a request from ICATS, Ben Steikleather. Board, the uh, agenda item you have before you is to request to add a position to our current fiscal year budget, uh, Processing Assistant 3. Attached with it is a budget amendment that shows the uh, extra revenue coming in. The extra revenue comes from the town of Mooresville, a contract that we have with them to provide services and Mitchell Community College. I didn't budget those revenues whenever we went through the budget process because that had to go through their procedures and it wasn't final. So I decided to hold off on that. We currently have, have someone performing these duties in a temporary role because of, um, of some personnel issues at ICATS. The emails that are attached with the memo go to speak to the customer service improvement that has occurred because of that. ICATS, as you know, is in a little different situation. We bring in all of our own revenue, part of running a good Business models provide co good customer service. We've really improved that by adding this position. Um, by continuing and funding this position, that will continue. <coughs> when I took the role of transportation administrator, the number one complaint was the lack of answered phone calls. I addressed that through a temporary fix, and now it's time to make a permanent one. We definitely recognize the fact that um, funding changes from year to year. If funding shifts and revenues go down, we will um, assess it accordingly and make changes in personnel if we have to. Be more than happy to answer any questions about the, okay, the any position. Any questions, Mr. Steinkleather? Not. The floor is open for a motion. Motion to approve budget amendment number five. We have a motion to approve budget amendment number five for ICATS. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Item E is a request from the Sheriff's Office for approval of budget amendment number six, and Rick Eads will make that request. Good afternoon. Uh, we're asking for consent to approve budget amendment to accept the 2013 Justice Assistance Grant. Uh, this year, the grant amount is $15,105. The fund will be used or the funding will be used to purchase equipment for the athletic league and to purchase instructional equipment for the training academy. 
there is no match for this grant. Okay. Any questions of Mr. Eads? Floor is open for a motion. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve from Commissioner Griffith. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Item J is a request from the State Employees Credit Union. This is similar to the one we heard a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this would be for a new ATM down at the Government <coughs> Center South. Uh, it would be for a four-year lease agreement, and the amount the county would receive is $100 per year, and all of the utilities, including electricity, will be covered by SC, or state employees. And be glad to try and answer any questions that you have. Okay, any questions, Mr. Smith? Not for is open for a motion. Motion to approve the agreement. We have a motion to approve this agreement from Commissioner Boone. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item K is a request for approval of the August 2013 tax refunds and releases. And these are in order. And I request your approval. All right. Motion to approve. Motion to approve from Vice Chairman Norman. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And L is a request for approval of the September 3rd, 2013 minutes. Okay. We have a motion to approve from Commissioner Boone. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That brings us to announcements. Did I miss something? Okay, no, no, excuse me. Announcements to uh, of vacancies occurring on boards and commissions. The Nursing Home Advisory Committee, two announcements. The Adult Care Home Community Advisory Committee, one announcement. The Local Emergency Planning Committee, we have three announcements. Now we come to appointments to the boards and commissions, the Recreation Advisory Committee. And if it pleases the board, I would nominate Ms. Uh, Melissa Jablonski. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, I move we close the floor to nominations. Report Melissa Jablonski by acclamation. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Is there any unfinished business to come to our attention this evening? Public comment period. Anyone? We have one. Commissioner Dusenberry. Commissioner is Rhett Dusenberry, Town of Morsel. I'm also a commissioner. I just. I've been sitting in the back listening to y'all uh, this evening, and I just thought somebody ought to say thank you as a citizen and as a uh, fellow legislator. Uh, some of the particulars didn't come out about the uh, uh, approvals of the new industry improvements down there. A lot of people don't know that we created, we will be creating a, uh, 157 new full-time jobs, 27 part-time jobs, and the lowest wage on all of those jobs was $18 an hour. And some, one of the companies has an average of 65,000 for all their employees. So we are bringing good advanced manufacturing uh, jobs to the citizens, uh, which will in turn uh, create other tax revenue, quality of life. But I just wanted to say thank you to y'all. And, and also we're dealing with the same public safety vision that y'all are as well. And it is very sensitive, very painful. But uh, I think everybody keeps their sight on that ball of providing public safety as, uh, first of all, saving lives and second of all, property. But we are experiencing uh, tremendous growth down there. And considering the economy we're dealing with, uh, we, we can't, uh, we have to look at things in reality and deal with them as they are. But I appreciate uh, your ability to uh, look at the uh, needs uh, for the citizens of not only South Iredale County, Mooresville, and the entire county. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Deasonbury. I appreciate the uh, cooperation with the town of Mooresville and 
up and bring these jobs and certainly your personal effort very much. I'd like to offer you just one thing I, I read today was talking about the future of manufacturing and where the jobs may go and the title of the article is How China Has Lost Its Mojo. As a result of their one child per family policy, between now and 2030, there will be 67 million fewer workers in China than there is today. That's the population of France. They're going to have a labor shortage over there. It's already start, they're already starting to feel it because the workers, there's a labor shortage, and it's already started bidding up the price of labor. So we're now, if you include the price of labor and transportation costs, the gap between the cost to deliver products to market is narrowing ever more. And they say there's going to be a, a lot of opportunities in the future yeah, as a result of that policy. It's just something I read. I just wanted to add one more thing, Commissioner Johnson. Because of your stewardship with our tax rate and our tax dollars, um, there are unfortunately several counties around here tonight that are reaching for tissues because their their uh, industry or operations come in Iredale County and people should understand that's because of your leadership and uh, I'm not trying to be negative against those other counties but we you know we do a good job here and that's I'm, I'm sure you all subscribe to economic theory and that's what brings jobs is low taxes a good workforce good schools and it's all attributed to y'all and our board and the citizens of Iredell County. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, any new business? I would like to mention one thing, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Back during the budget deliberations, I was critical of the Iredell State Schools for sending out emails on the, you know, official, to the official email list, encouraging people to to lobby in favor or against certain legislation. I didn't think that public resources should be used for that purpose. Uh, at that time, the school superintendent and chairman of the school board uh, defended that uh, action. I just read an article in the Charlotte Observer today, Central Piedmont Community College forwarded an uh, uh, email from a group supporting a bond issue. Mecklenburg County. Uh, one of the county commissioners there, Bill James, criticized uh, that. And there was a little bit different reaction there. The spokesman for Central Com Community, Piedmont Community College, uh, Jeff Lawrence, said the commissioners were right. He's called forwarding the email an oversight on our part and said, quote, we won't forward any other vote yes messages moving forward, end of quote. So, um, you know, Central Piedmont Community College understands you shouldn't use uh, public resources for uh, lobbying purposes, and I think that kind of indicates my, my position on that issue. Now, I, I realize that one, one time it was lobbying for legislation, another time lobbying for a bond issue, but it was still you, you know, use of public resources for lobbying. So I just thought I would mention that. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Any other new business? County manager's report? Don't really have a report. Just want to remind you that we're looking at November 8th as a um, as the date for our um, board work session. Looking at it's, at it's on a Friday and looking at holding it at uh, Little Joe's in at the Berrien Springs campus. And if there are any you know, issues that you want to uh, make sure are included on the agenda, please let me know. Okay. All right. I'm not aware of any closed session this evening, so I'll offer a motion we adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. First time in a long time. We have All opposed, motion.